The Brahmos is one of the most capable and fastest anti-ship cruise missiles. Yet, even though many countries have expressed their interest, so far its export success has been limited. Why? As the weapon detective, we're now investigating the Brahmos and the answer to this question. The Brahmos, also known as PJ-10, symbolizes a huge leap in the Indian defense industry. Taking its name from the portmanteau formed from the Brahmaputra and the Moskva rivers, this missile has many game-changing features. However, interestingly, the market success of the Brahmos has not been as bright as it should be. Before analyzing the missile and situation, let's briefly look at its history and features. Due to its rich lands, the Indian subcontinent has always attracted foreign invaders. So, when India became independent after a long struggle, Dalhi naturally prioritized having a strong military, especially a navy, not to face such a bitter experience again. Since the beginning, the Indian Navy has been the largest naval force with well-trained personnel in the region. Initially, the UK was still the primary source for naval ships. Then, India began to acquire surface combatants from the USSR. Yet, Dalhi wanted to have a national naval ship design and building capabilities. India took the first step with the Nilgiri class frigates. With the experience gained from this project, in the 1970s, India initiated a program for designing and building its first indigenous frigate, the Godavari class. And with follow-on projects, the Indian naval industry has reached a certain level. By the 1990s, it was time to step up to gain the capability of designing and producing indigenous naval subsystems such as the anti-ship missile. Russia was the perfect partner for this goal. It was keen to sell former Soviet technology to overcome its severe economic problems. Thus, the Defense Research and Development Organization of India and NPO Machina Strainia of Russia established a joint venture called Brahmos Aerospace on December 5, 1995 to develop the P-800 Onyx-based new Brahmos anti-ship missile. India holds a 50.5% share of this joint venture. The USSR had begun to work on the P-800, whose NATO reporting name is SSN-26 Citrobel in 1983. Due to the lack of interest, alongside the uncertainty during the dissolution process of the USSR, NPO Machina Strainia could perform the first guided weapon trials of the Onyx using the Nanushka 4-class corvette Nakat in 1995. Even though the Brahmos and P-800 had similar appearances, they had some differences in size. The first firing test of the Brahmos was performed on June 12, 2001. A missile fired from the destroyer INS Rajput successfully hit a decommissioned Arnala-class corvette during a trial conducted on November 23, 2003. The Indian Navy has deployed the Brahmos since 2005. The land-based variant was inducted into the Indian Army service in 2007. Initially, 65% of the Brahmos components, including its ramjet engine and radar seeker, came from Russia. Yet. India has managed to reduce this ratio to 35% over the years and plans to increase its share to 85% eventually. Dalhi has invested in domestic seeker and booster development programs to achieve this goal. A modified Brahmos with an indigenous seeker was tested for the first time on March 22, 2018. One year later, India conducted a fire trial with another modified missile with a domestically developed propulsion system airframe and power supply. On September 30, 2020, a Brahmos was also tested with an indigenous booster and airframe. Thanks to its production materials, the Brahmos have a low radar cross-section. Still, due to its shape and the high infrared signature on the ramjet engine, it cannot be described as a stealthy missile. The Brahmos can be launched on either in a vertical or inclined position by its solid propellant booster engine. The Brahmos can be fired in salva mode against single or multiple targets in different directions within 2 to 2.5 second intervals. The missile then stabilizes itself using brief pulses from the rockets in its nose cone. A pair of more powerful rockets fire sequentially to turn the Brahmos 90 degrees. The booster is also used for initial acceleration and is jettisoned after. 
Then, the nose cone is ditched to open the ramjet intake, whose design compresses the air for more efficient combustion. The sustained supersonic cruise is performed via a liquid-fueled ramjet engine. The Brahmos can either climb to 15,000 meters of altitude or keep cruising 5 to 10 meters from the ground level. During the mid-course phase, it uses an inertial navigation system. The Brahmos land attack variants also have GPS and GLONASS navigation systems. During the terminal phase, the missile activates its seeker, which can be operated in active or passive mode, and performs evasive maneuvers at Mach 2.8. The Block 2 variant has a supersonic steep diving capability. If the Brahmos initiate its final attack from a high altitude, it can reach a diving speed of over Mach 3. The missile has a mechanically scanned seeker. The one on the Block 2 can identify a ship or structure. So, this variant can perform strikes against both land and naval targets with high precision. According to the producer company, the Brahmos has infrared and laser seeker options. The high speed of the Brahmos gives it a better target penetration characteristics than lighter subsonic cruise missiles. It can be fitted with a nuclear warhead. On the other hand, unlike many modern anti-ship cruise missiles, it has no dual-way link capability. So, it cannot change its course or target during the flight and has no self-destruction feature. The ship-based variants is used on the Vishakapatnam, Kolkata, Delhi and Rajput class destroyers and the Nilgri, Shivalik and Talwar class frigates. The land-based variant is truck or trailer mounted. India uses a CBR unprotected Tatra made truck while Philippines has preferred a trailer mounted version. The land-based Brahmos also has salvo firing capability against multiple targets in different directions. The missile has a range of 290 km with a supersonic cruise. On the other hand, DRDO successfully conducted a test fire of the upgraded Brahmos variant with an 800 km range. India plans to apply this upgrade to all existing missiles. Besides, it is working on a version with a 1500 km range. The submerged launch Brahmos variant was test fired successfully for the first time from a submerged pontoon on March 20, 2013. It can be launched from a depth of 40 to 50 meters. India is also working on a smaller Brahmos variant which can be launched from 533 mm torpedo tubes. The Brahmos A is the air launch variant with a range of 500 km. It can be launched from an Su-30 MKI with a strengthened undercarriage new hardpoints and structural modifications. To reduce the weight, the Brahmos A is fitted with a smaller booster. Also, it has new fins for airborne stability after launch. The missile can be released from an altitude of 500 to 14,000 meters. During the terminal phase, it cruises at 15 meters. India is now working on the miniaturized Brahmos NG version. It will have the same speed and range as the original Brahmos but its weight will be reduced to around 1500 kilograms. Besides, the missile will have a lower radar cross-section. It will be equipped with an active electronically scanned array radar instead of a mechanically scanned seeker. Alongside the Su-30 MKI, the Indian MiG-29K, Tejas and Rafale will be able to carry the Brahmos NG. The Brahmos Block 3 has advanced guidance and upgraded software. It has the capabilities of high maneuver at multiple points and steep dives from high altitudes. Alongside the inertial navigation system, the Block 3 variant can use the data from GPS, GLONASS and Gagan navigation satellites which gives accuracy below 5 meters. India and the Philippines are the users of the Brahmos. The Brahmos has a length of 8.4 meters, a diameter of 600 millimeters and a wingspan of 1.7 meters. It weighs 3000 kilograms, while the Brahmos A variant weighs 2500 kilograms. The missile can carry a 200 to 300 kg semi-armor piercing conventional warhead or a nuclear one. Its range is 290 kilometers. The Brahmos A can reach a distance of 450 to 500 kilometers. Its maximum cruising speed is Mach 2.8. With its outstanding performance, the Brahmos is among the best in its class. India has all the right to be proud of. However, 
Some Indian sources overstep the limit from time to time. They even claim that the Brahmos is the first Mark III cruise missile or the fastest one. In fact, some other missiles such as the P-500 Basalt and the ASMP had already reached the speed of Mark III before the Brahmos. And the current fastest operational cruise missile is the Russian 3M22 Sircon. India is already working on the Brahmos II with a Mach 8 speed. The early conceptual design of this missile highly resembles with the Sircon. Still, the high speed of the current Brahmos is enough to make it one of the deadliest anti-ship missiles available. It leaves a too short reaction time for the targeted ship to intercept it. Brazil, Brunei, Chile, Indonesia, Egypt, Malaysia, Oman, South Africa, Venezuela and Vietnam have expressed their interest in the Brahmos. Interestingly, during the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Greece in 2023, the Greek media claimed that the Hellenic Navy was also interested in the missile. This possible sale indicates that India openly takes against Turkey. These two countries have no conflict of interest and do not threaten each other physically. Still, the Turks have a special connection with the Indian Muslims due to their support of the Turkish War of Liberation. It makes Pakistan, founded by the Indian Muslims, and Turkey sentimental allies beyond the national interest. In fact, Turkey is not against India, but is too close to Pakistan. As the old expression says, the friend of my enemy is my enemy. So, India sees Turkey as an enemy and uses another expression. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Still, Greece's Brahmos acquisition is unlikely. Greece and Turkey have threatened each other with a war since the 1950s, but have never fought. And as a European Union member, Greece depends on German and French economic support. So if the Hellenic Navy needs a weapon system, Greece should, or more correctly, has to buy from them. Despite its obvious advantages, the Brahmos is a big missile, which makes its integration on existing surface combatants hard. Also, its many critical parts come from Russia. So, buying a completely Russian-made anti-ship cruise missile like the Onyx is a less complicated acquisition model than a partially Russian one. Besides, after the Russian invasion of Ukraine, supplying the Russian-made parts became more problematic. The defense market is conservative. To sell its product, a new player must overcome several psychological barriers. With the Philippine sale, the Brahmos has already broken the first barrier. Now, India has to prove that it can provide trouble-free customer support. After that, many new customers would come in a few years. The design philosophy of the Brahmos has changed the naval warfare concept. Many countries are now working on supersonic or even hypersonic missiles. In the last decade, India has become closer to the Western Bloc, which would probably bring new opportunities. The future of the Brahmos seems brighter. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.